um, I'm doing this with a long time friend. We've known each other for, I think, a decade now. So, um, my name is Linda and my friend is Sigu. I think you know. So um, you've just said you're Linda. Um, do you have a second name or something? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, thank you. Um, my name is Linda Achieng. I'm a software engineer at Synchro. And yes, my second name is Achieng. <laughs> oh, and that's your Twitter handle, I guess. So anyone yeah. who wants to reach out to you can do that. Um, so I'm Sigu Magwa, and um, I just found a new favorite tagline, Open Source Made Me. Open Source in that I use open source tools to do almost everything. Elixir is open source. Alang is open source. Um, open source again because I got better at programming because I was in a community of open source learning, not open source software. So it was, uh, we could just meet and do more programming. Um, that's actually how I also met Elixir some years back. So uh, I'm Sigu Magwa. <coughs> I'm the co-founder and CTO of Podi. We do Elixir Consulting over here. So I had to rush to the office uh, with a nice background logo over there just because of uh, too many kids at home. Um, Linda, I loved your profile, but I think my profile is way cooler than yours. Don't start. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this fun fact about this photo, it's... Uh, it's, uh, it's actually a photo, it's a full photo that I took with my phone in a friend's backyard. <clears throat> the friend's brother came with this, it was a sculptured thing from the Czech Republic. He flew into Nairobi and gave it as a present to, oh yeah, there's a Czech <laughs> who is really happy. Uh, flew into Nairobi and gave it to the brother, so he has it on the backyard. So that's the story about this. So anywhere you see this, Assume it's me, unless someone has stolen my property somewhere on the internet. Uh, just to set a bit of expectations onto this call, um, we're not going to do a technical talk, uh, so don't expect uh, fancy technical terms and all that. Uh, what you're going to do is to give you a story about our first hand or um, a witness overview of how Elixir has changed life or what has led us or any other people that we know to decide to use Elixir. So um, if you realize the title of the talk, I'll just go back a bit. On the title of the talk, we added a plus, other impact made by Elixir. Uh, so made with Elixir. So I think, um, Linda, you might be in a good position to start us off. Uh... Okay, where should I start from? Um, I think you can do... Okay, choose. Uh, when do you want to start? Last year? Uh, last year is a bit too soon. Uh, go back a bit. <laughs> 2010? No, 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 no. Do 2018. <laughs> Let's start from 2018. Okay. So, um, it's 2018 and... At that time, I'm learning how to code, doing professional things. And I get to reconnect with a friend of mine. This friend is called Malcolm. So I'm learning how to code. And at that point, I still don't know of Stack Overflow. I mean, I know it's a site, but I don't know what it does. I didn't know what it did by then. And um, I'm learning new things and Malcolm is my go-to person because he's a friend I've known for a long time. And um, also, you know, just learning software for the first time, like in a professional environment and getting to understand what is happening and having that arm to always go to was just like a good experience. And so um, I'd just like to introduce Malcolm um, he's the one with the computer, and that little guy over there I'm carrying is my little guy. He's my son. So as I said, Malcolm was a, is a key person in my software development journey, and I got to learn a, a lot from him. And he's also a Python guru. He loves Python. 
And he also loves Elixir because it's functional. And he feels like now he now has control over functional programming. He now understands it. So um, a little story about Malcolm. Malcolm has sickle cell anemia. So um, he gets attacked frequently. But since we are in Kisumu, we know how to do it. If he's sick, we know we call his dad. His dad is going to call his physician. And his physician is going to come to where we are. And since Kisumu is a small city, it, the whole thing might take like 10, 15 minutes tops. And we are sure, we are for sure that Malcolm is going to get treated. But something else, Malcolm has got a job offer in the city. And it's an exciting thing. It's exciting because he's quite a handful. So we're excited that he's leaving. But it's also emotional because... Um, yeah, this is my one person to go to person. If I have anything that I want to do or if I'm having a problem, he's not going to be around. And um, yeah, that was just like the one part. So Malcolm goes to the city one time. This is like the third time he's going there. And he's still not familiar. I remember us making jokes that make sure you know one place so that when you're lost, you can call us and we will ask our contacts in the city and they will come for you. So this is just, um, it was just something funny because it was his third time officially in the city alone. So it's an, it's an interesting time for him. It's really interesting, but in the city, Malcolm gets an attack and we have to get him to hospital. I mean, it's crazy. We have to get him to hospital. We, being new in Nairobi, Nairobi is the city. We are sure of one hospital and we want to take him there. And just to give you an example of how far we've gone, the hospital we are at this point, we are here and the hospital is down here. So we left, we went through all this, uh, this whole journey and it's long, there's traffic and um, yeah. It's, it's a crazy journey. We get to hospital and he's treated. We are a little, we feel like we've taken like about an hour and a half to go to hospital, but he's treated. And so we let him go. We tell him that, hey, let's, uh, let me go get a few things and then I will come back. Before we leave the hospital, just like 10 minutes after the hospital and we get called, Malcolm is dead. Yeah, he died. And it's, it's crazy because um, when, we were talk when we were leaving the hospital, we were talking like, hey, this was really close because we came a long way and we were just happy that he was given like something to stabilize him. But we didn't know how bad it was. We were actually a little bit late. And when the mom was giving a eulogy, she said that, if these people would have gotten to hospital earlier, I'm sure Malcolm would still be alive. So that is one thing that haunted us and gave us a really hard time in, in the office. Yeah, uh, Linda, I remember that time, it was um, a bit of a, not a bit, it was really a sad moment at, uh, for us in the office. And, um, you could not get night sleeps and sometimes I remember you were not, you actually even refused to get out just maybe to the washrooms alone, thinking that maybe Malcolm is still playing some tricks on you. So you just, all the time you wanted someone to accompany you to the washrooms. You're so um, yeah, during this period is when you started talking about uh, what if we did something for Malcolm? I remember all the time, every time we have our morning stand-ups or the evening stand-ups, you're like, what if we did something so that we don't have another Malcolm or, or family and friends of another Malcolm with a sickle cell attack does not go through the same. And uh, during this period, again, we were in the office just on the whiteboard trying to come up with a name before even coming up with the product. So how can we really call this for we need to do something and we need to build something for another Malcolm of the future. And we started coming up with a name. Then we settled on Nailinda. Yes. 
And it has nothing to do with Nailing. <laughs> oh, and what really does Nailinda mean, actually? So, um, Nailinda is a Swahili word. It means to protect. Yes. I'm right, Sigu, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, uh, it means to protect. You are Linda and it's called Nailinda, so everyone confuses and thinks that you named it after yourself. We know people who name things after themselves, but... Yeah. yeah. But no, no, it, it, it's not up to me. So, um, Nailinda gives you an option of locating a hospital and an extra option of locating and sending a notification to a hospital. So what happened to us is we went, we traveled like an hour, but in between we had hospitals that we could go to, but we didn't know about it since we are new at that place. So we thought, okay, fine, this thing happens. People go to new places. Um, Someone like me, I really don't look at the hospital. I don't look for hospitals around me because um, I'm not thinking that I'm going to get sick. That is not the first thing in my mind. So this is the one thing that we wanted to have so that you don't, you don't think about getting sick. But if you do, if something happens, you have an option of finding a place near you. We understand at that time there's panic, there's a lot of things going through your mind. So we want to give you a seamless experience to find a hospital and also let the hospital know that you're coming. So um, I will talk about the third option. The second option just gets you a hospital, but I'll talk more about the third option. Maybe Sigu, you can play the video to see how it works. So um, the one thing that we do is we ask you where you are. Oops, sorry about that. So. Um, how it works is we ask you where you are and we ask you what your emergency is and we ask you your landmark like just any landmark that you see around you and when we're asking a landmark we're expecting names of bars we're expecting names of parks so we're expecting a name of the building we've done our research to know that if i am at this place these are some of the names that we are expecting people to say so the moment you give us that we give you an we give you the, the closest hospitals that are close to you. And we send it to you as a text message. And we also send a notification to the hospital. And what the hospital does is they have a responsibility to respond to your emergency by either telling you, yes, you can come. We can handle your emergency. We are waiting for you. Or no, you can't come. We can't handle your emergency. So we don't want you to go to this hospital and waste your time over there. Not really waste your time, but yeah, it's, we don't want you going and waiting just to be taken to another hospital. So that is what Nailinda does. And we made it to, to be able to not use internet because we don't have very reliable internet in Kenya. We, you would be lucky to be in the rural places and even get 3G. I usually get a lot of network interruptions and so many times I've had to drop out of calls just because my internet is not stable. But this is an emergency service. I don't want you to have to think about not having internet and you want to have, uh, you want to get to a hospital. So um, honestly, the vision we have is to just have healthcare for people. We want people to be able to rely on us when they have an emergency. Am I getting it right, Stigo? <laughs> Am I leaving oh, anything? Yes. Uh, no, I don't think you're leaving anything. And um, I think maybe you just not tell us uh, the current state of the application. Oh, yeah. So currently we are at our soft launch. We are testing the site. We have a few users have access to the, to the software. And we're also talking to hospitals and they also have the software. So we are testing, we are testing to see what is happening, how, how many requests we are getting, if we can handle the request, how we are handling, um, if the users are experiencing errors, how are we handling it? That is what we are doing right now. And it's been an interesting journey, a learning journey, and it's exciting. It's, it's exciting to be able to see this come to action. Yeah. Awesome. So um, I think I can add a few things onto that. So the first thing that, um, yes, the soft launch is getting out, but also, you know, 
when things are going out, there are these um, crazy ideas of what can we do, what can we add on top of this. So we also thought, what if we provide this as infrastructure because we can't do this alone. We need other uh, third parties or those who are existing to help us do this. So uh, what if we provided an infrastructure for everyone else to just plug in and use this? So um, the first people that we approached are a group of girls. Uh, they call themselves the ICAT group. Um, so what they do is um, they deal with um, FGM. I know some of you might be hearing this for the first time. It's uh, the full... It's an abbreviation for female genital mutilation. So it's, uh, it's more of circumcision, but female circumcision. So some parts of the country normally practice this. So the ladies are out there to stop this. Uh, they're out there to, uh, to educate other people on how to stop this particular uh, practice. And uh, they're also giving out emergency numbers and response. So we're in talks with them to provide them with such kind of infrastructure so that they can concentrate on getting the word out and getting to the right people. Um, I think, Linda, that's, that's uh, so the far that we've gone, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, yes. and um, I think so far maybe they, uh, there might be a question from the audience asking themselves. Uh, we're not opening up, but they might be asking, have we managed to save any life yet? Or has Elixir managed to save any life yet? Um, before not I answer that, I'll probably say, um, I'll probably say why it's Elixir. And oh, yeah, I think that's a, we, that's a great idea, yeah. Let me say why we yeah so um this is an emergency service we need to make sure that we can we can't afford to lose a connection and if we lose one we want to be able to reconnect and we really don't want to worry about this so this is one of the major reasons why we chose elixir um also another thing we were learning it and when we are learning it we are finding more about it and it's exciting we are seeing people talking about like the promises it has and getting to see it in action was just really amazing and just as i was saying real time is crucial we can't we can't afford to lose a connection and yeah another yeah, thing we we go had ahead. in mind is, sorry yeah just go ahead um another thing we had is this is an application we want to give out for free. We don't want anyone to have to pay. If the hospital pays, they might be reluctant on having it. If a patient pays, that is not an emergency, that's a business. So we we are giving it free of charge. So we, we were looking at this time that it's going to scale and we are seeing the promise that it can scale, but also save us cost. So that was one thing that we also thought about. And we said, okay, we can chip into our pockets and say, okay, we can maintain this. Yeah, um, so sorry I interjected earlier, but uh, you reminded me of the fun times when you were learning at Lixa in the office, uh, the mob sessions in the afternoon, and you were like, yeah, this is exciting. We really, really need to use this. So that also contributed into why we chose Elixir at that particular moment. So uh, I'll just throw back that question to you. Um, have you managed or has Elixir managed to save any life so far? Um, not yet. Not I don't yet. think we have. Okay, so uh, yeah. it's because of the stage that you are in at the moment. And, uh, yeah. um, but I, I have a few things to share about how Elixir has touched and changed a few lives. So um, can I take the stage for a minute? You can go and take some water <laughs> while I talk to them. All right, so... Um, <laughs> Oh, you have some juice there. So thank you very much, Linda, for the story up to that point. So um, I'll share with you how Elixir has managed to touch and change some lives. So um, let me do that. Look at that photo for a minute is a bit too long. So just do three seconds or four. One, two, three. Okay, three seconds are up. So. Um, if you try to guess what's going on in this photo, it's a bit like throwing everything everywhere. So I'll let you know what's going on. 
Let me tell you a story about the old man, the man in the red T-shirt. He is a farmer. Um, he is a farmer, and he has a farm right next to his home. This farm is not a big place. Um, it's big enough for him, but it's not commercially viable. So what the farmer does is um, every year he has to farm for his domestic consumption. So um, where we live, there are two seasons. We have the long rain season and the short rain season. So the farmer has to time the long rain season, be prepared so that he can cultivate for his domestic consumption. Uh, sometimes if they miss to be prepared, the rains might start and you don't yet have your farming inputs. So really this needs to be done um, as soon as possible. Luckily enough, there's a nonprofit organization that covers the area that this farmer lives in. So with this nonprofit organization, they allow the farmers to register and tell them what they intend to cultivate for the next season. So they prepare them early enough so they don't get shocked that the long rains are here. So what the organization does is uh, once you're registered, you tell, the, you tell the organization what you want for the next long rain season. They have experts that package your inputs. Uh, some of the inputs, sorry about that. Some of the inputs, um, they start from about $20 or so, but you have to pay for that input for you to pick it up. So um, the lease package, I think it's about $20. And $20 according to our living standards, not everyone, but according to the living standards for some people, it's a bit on the higher side. Uh, Linda is a witness to that <laughs> back when we were in the office. <laughs> putting me on the spotlight, but yes, yeah. <laughs> it was a lot. Um, there are times we would be walking from the office to home. We would be walking as a group, so it's, it's fun. But the main, it, one thing we were trying to do is to save 30 cents so that we could be able to use it the next day so to come back to the office from home. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, and uh, that's back when... Um, <laughs> lunch would cost 30 cents and sometimes you'll have to think about should I eat lunch or should I take a ride back home? So, <laughs> um, yeah, 20 USD is a lot. Um, sometimes, and even to the farmer, it might be a lot of money. So the organization luckily allows the farmers to pay bit by bit. And the fact that they can pay this bit by bit actually means that um, by the end of the year or something, they'll have finished their payments. We've witnessed cases of a farmer not being able to clear up the 20 USD um, by the end of the year, and they're allowed to pay as little as 10 cents, 30 cents, or even a dollar. Um, if a farmer pays regularly and they have a good payment pattern, you will be allowed to pick a product without fully paying for it once you attain a particular percentage. The photo you're seeing right here is uh, one of the days that we, uh, we were lucky to accompany the organization to the delivery site. So there you have the fertilizers. They are being ready to be given out to the farmers. Um, on this day, there are a few things that might happen. There might be problems, but sometimes things go well. So they pick up their um, products. Right here, you can see the old lady, she's happy. She has the fertilizer, the big uh, bag, and the smaller bag is a, a, um, it's a bag of a seed of maize. So this is enough for farming for one hectare, uh, one acre of land. Uh, just take a look at the phone that she's using. It's of interest to us in a few. Um, let's go back to the old man. So this story was the story of the old man. Don't forget about it. So let's go back. What do you think might have been the problem? Okay, I won't let you try to guess that, but uh, there are a couple of problems that might have been there. So the first one is that uh, maybe he sent some payments, but the payments are missing. Maybe he requested for a seed, but the seed is no longer there. Maybe, um, an officer accidentally delivered items and it was claimed that the items are already delivered, but they were not. Um, maybe he was a non-qualifier, but actually he qualified. So 
here they are trying to find out what the problem is for this old man. So um, we had to design a system for this. Yes, Linda? So we are at the Lexicon. I'm trying to understand why this man is here. Ah, okay. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, not really sorry about that, but yeah, uh, we're getting to that next. So why really did you do Elixir for this? Uh, why are we even telling you all these stories uh, for the old man? So the first thing um, we were approached to talk about uh, to design a system that can help manage all this from the beginning to the end. And we chose Elixir for some reasons. Uh, we get spikes and uh, the spikes are during registration deadlines, are during um, payments. So they have deadlines to make their payments and they are micro payments. So most of them try to beat the deadline. They pay as late as 11.59 in the night, just so that they can beat the deadline and they can get their farming input. Um, the other thing is uh, you saw the phone that the lady was using. Sometimes they don't have smartphone or anything. So sometimes when you do deliveries, it's somewhere we don't have completely, we don't have even GSM or we don't have internet connectivity. So we, we collect all the information offline. Then when we get back to the internet, we do a synchronization back to the servers. Uh, the second reason is uh, this one. So Linda, without telling your age, have you ever used this camera or did you ever witness it coming out? It will stop it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, but can you guess if um, how it feel how it felt like when this camera came out? Actually, I remember the feeling getting uh, instant photos. Yes. Yeah, getting instant photos out of a camera. Uh, back then, we used to take photos, and when you take a photo, you have to wait for two three days for it to be processed from the we used to call it negative for you to get back your. Um, your final uh, copy of the image. So this is the feeling that actually live you gave us. The fact that you can validate everything instantly, it was a really nice feeling. And that's why the dashboard for the system has been designed using live view in this case and scenario. So this is why we still continue using Elixir for such system designs. The other reason is, yes, it's a tool we know. It's a tool we know how to handle not really, I can't claim expertise in this, but it's something we, did, uh, we know how to use. So it's a natural choice when you go to, into that. I know when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail, but this looks like the right, the right nail for the hammer that we had. Yeah, so those are some of the advantages that we had. Um, the, adv the disadvantages why we should not have used Elixir uh, this is more of a paradoxical thing. If you look at this image and you're a bit young, you might know where he lived. It's in the middle of nowhere. So that's where sometimes you take your deliveries, in the middle of nowhere, and uh, things have to work offline. That's sometimes why you cannot just use Elixir. But again, we had to find other solutions like um, mobile applications or having uh, progressive web apps just to handle that. Linda, you talked about your child back yes. a few minutes ago. Yeah, so, uh, and I know you want a good future for your child, right? Yeah, he's three now, and that is all I can think of now. Ah, awesome. Um, but again, I know you want them to have the best education and all that for the future okay. of your kid. I think that is all parents' dream. Okay, yeah. so uh, let's go to this. I would like you to make a guess now. I'm not taking to the audience, just uh, not really a guess. Can you tell me what you can see? Um, I see kids and I uh -huh. see an adult who looks like a tutor. Mm -hmm. And there's this kid who is holding some alphabets, a paper that has alphabets. So probably they're learning or something. Oh. Yeah, you're right, Linda. So I took a photo of this and um, we were requested to create a system again in Elixir that actually um, helps these kids to improve in their education. So it's a complementary system to help an existing running system to help these kids improve. The criteria for choosing the children was they take the bottom 10 so um, look at this classroom, look at these kids, 
And again, you take the bottom 10 out of this. So this is the kind of things that we have used Elixir to improve their lives. The challenges and the reason as to why we chose Elixir is the same as what you've just um, talked about above. So Linda, I know you've done a bit of commercial and profit work. We've talked a, bit, a lot about non-profit. So I don't know if you have something about that. Um, yes. And you've put me in the spotlight so many times, so I'll have to put you too. So <laughs> I would want you to get something. Okay. Um, yeah. What do you think is happening here, Sigu? Uh, there's frustration, but there's money going up. So it's a bit confusing because if this was my monthly salary, I would be like, yes, I would not be this emoji. I would be the other emoji, the happy one. <laughs> Yes, I mean, the figures look good. This, this is good money if it's coming in. But the thing is, this money was, coming, it was going out. So um, we were outsourcing an API for real-time data. We wanted to be able to give out, to be able to give our users um, notifications whether they are offline or they are online or when they're back online the most important thing was to have them online. And anytime they went offline, we wanted to give them um, a notification. And the moment we got to 100 WebSocket connections, our bill started going high. And the more WebSocket connections we got, the more the, the, more the bill came up. And the moment it got to 15,000, we were like, hey, no, 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 no. I think we can do this. And, you know, um, we were thinking, hey, Elixir was is promising us real time so we can try and build this service we are paying for and that is what we did and at that point we jumped into channels and i remember when we were doing mob sessions for uh, when i was still with sigu i would ask myself okay so where am i going to use channels in my elixir life but life is so funny. I feel like programming is so funny. You, you never know what is waiting for you. And solving this problem, we talked about channels. And um, so we came up with this name, Freebird, because we are breaking up with our, our PubSub provider and we are now building us. There's this song called Freebird by um, Leonard Skinner. And it's a breakup song. It's a really interesting song. I had it from a colleague and it was really interesting. So um, when we were shifting to, when we're now building this, we had to make sure that we are still going to give our clients the same promise that we have been giving them, the same experience. They, we don't want them having to start complaining, hey, we are, we are having notifications that we are offline, yet we are online. We, we wanted to give them the same experience that we, if they were having before. And we also didn't want them to know that we are, we are shifting or rather we are, we are now doing something different. So we ended up coming, we built this. And the reasons why we built this was, um, yeah, we, we were talking about, we knew we were going to scale. We knew we were continuing, we were growing. It's a business, we are growing. And we didn't want to have like our costs go high. And once we were able to build this, we cut our costs. Now our bill came from 15,000 to something less. We only have to pay for hosting now um, for our servers, which is much cheaper than what we were doing. And it was one time that we, I think we saved the day. We didn't save it because we are having problems. And um, we chose Elixir because we knew it would solve our problem, but to some point, we also dug ourselves into a pit hole. Like now we are having problems that we actually really don't, I honestly don't know how to solve them. Like um, sometimes when we, uh, what is this thing called in English? Um, we are getting connections and when, and when one device goes offline, we get like seven or 10 API calls depending on the number of nodes we have up. So we are having problems that we still don't know how to, we still don't know how to go about, but we are happy we used Elixir because yeah, we solved a problem that we, we, we cut our costs down. So thank you Sigu for jumping me. But one last thing we swear, this is the last thing we're going to say. 
<laughs> Thanks for promising that this is the last thing. Um, Am I talking too much? I'm not to... really. <laughs> Martin just did this, so it means you're not talking too much. So let's go uh, to the last thing, which is actually a disclaimer. So um, you've heard a lot, you've seen a lot. So the first disclaimer, let's start with that. Uh, you might not be able to guess what's going on here. Again, this, is, this has been a lot of guesswork. But um, again, um, San Francisco is one of the richest regions in the world. But again, you find such photos. You find such regions. And uh, everyone who's been in, to San Francisco knows about the downtown San Francisco. So um, any photo that you have witnessed during this talk, this is a disclaimer, is um, a niche and it's a selected region um, and it's, there are selected problems that we work with. And um, in that case, I think, Linda, we can show them a bit about where we live, uh, where I currently am. Yeah? Yes. We have a really nice nightlife. It's, it's an active nightlife. It's really amazing. We have um, amazing clubs. We love our beer and our yeah. spirit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I... We live in a very beautiful city. We have amazing places. We, yes, we have some places that don't have internet. Even in the city, we have places that don't have like really good internet, but it's a really beautiful place that one time you should put in your bucket list. And as you can see, there is a lake over there. That is the largest freshwater lake in, is it in the world? Uh, like wild Africa, not sure yet, but I'm, I'm happy you've talked about internet and with, if I didn't have internet, then we will not be streaming this <laughs> while I'm right in the office. Our office is somewhere there. So this is the lake that you're talking about. That's the sunset. It's one of the most beautiful sunsets that we have. I feel like that? I want to say the best, but yeah. How about that those are people fishing because we love fishing. Fishing is one thing that we are known for. It's a lakeside city. So this is a beautiful place. If you like fish, this is one place that you should come. All right. And before we run out of time, let me do one last disclaimer. So you remember this school? Yes. So such schools exist just like downtown San Francisco exists. But again, such schools also exist. I've taken a photo. Most of the photos, they're photos that I've taken. This is a photo that I took. So such schools also exist. I was here. This was an event that we attended. We have an Ask Me Anything session, coding for good. That will be 3.15 p.m. to 3.35. Is that Kenyan time? Uh, no, uh, I'll have to do European time right now. So it's CET. <laughs> So that will be 3.15 CET, not Kenyan time. Kenyan time, that will be around 4. We, yeah. Yeah, around 4.15 for the Kenyan time. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for taking this journey with us. It's, it's really exciting to know that we, have, that we have a tool and we have um, a community that is actively developing and giving us more tools to be able to just solve problems that not many people have heard of, and we're excited to share with you all this. So you have something else? Yeah, um, it's a very big thank you to the whole Elixir team, the core team, the support, um, Elixir Forum, Slack, and all um, everywhere that we've been able to go to, uh, the books that have been published that enabled us to know this. Uh, thank you uh, for the Elixir conferences. We get a lot of information. Uh, lightning talks and all that. We get a lot of help from there. So thank you very much and thank you for attending these. I think I can say that in Swahili for those who are interested. <laughs> so in Swahili, you say thank you. Uh, you say Kari uh, Asante. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, I almost blew that. So you, you say, say Asante. Asante. <laughs> yes, Asante in Swahili. Yes. As yes, Asante. Asante. So I think we can take questions now, right? Yes. Yes. We have a few minutes for questions. How, how many more by the way, Martin? I think that would be five minutes. And uh, I, 
I think I will say it in Danish instead of trying to. Mange tak. Thank you very much for your excellent talk, and I think it's very inspiring to to see these. Um, like, we are actually helping out, saving lives, the Elixir core team and community, and and you guys. So that is. Uh, Hot touching. Uh, so I am trying to find the uh, the Q and A section section on the Hoover app right now. I didn't have to tap open. There we go. So so uh, how does the users interact with the? Um, what is the interface that they're using to interact with the application? So they're using the fonts. Sigu, I can start that and then you can finish it. They're using the fonts and we are using USSD. USSD is something very common in Kenya and I can say Africa at large, where you don't, you only need um, a phone connection. So it's, we give you a code, a three digit code, which you use to access the site. Maybe Sibu, you can add on to that. Oh yeah, um, actually it's, um, we thought USSD is a very, very common thing until I talked to, yeah, mm -hmm. until I talked to a couple of friends who had no idea what it is. So USSD is, um, it's unstructured supplementary data or something. So if you do star one, three, four hash, you get a menu, a menu that looks like, uh, so all you need is connection, to your provider, that's it. You don't need internet, you don't need anything. Sometimes you don't need even to have um, credit on your phone or any airtime left on your phone for you to be able to use that. So that's the most common interface. We also have a dashboard and a web to use. Uh, we didn't share that because everyone has them. <laughs> so, but for the users, they have that option. Um, the other reason there's no mobile application, for example, is the moment you're able even to have that mobile application, you probably have a Google map, which can take you to a particular hospital. So it was not, uh, it's lower in the priority of what needs to be there. Yeah, and um, I've been asked to, uh, to tell people to unmute the mic and ask the question. So Lorenzo, uh, Sinisi has a question, if you want to unmute your mic and ask your question. Otherwise I can do it. Uh, where do you usually deploy and how? Um, uh, Linda, you go faster, I can go. <laughs> yeah, I can go first. Okay. For Nailina, we have we've deployed it. Doesn't work. Sorry? Ah, okay, sorry. It wasn't working. I had to refresh the page. Sorry. I don't know if you asked the question, but I was just asking where do you deploy, how, like which, uh, which tool do you use? If you're using distillery, like I've seen some Kubernetes, I think, graph. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we've talked about, I think, four apps. So I will talk about Nailinda is deployed to um, to Heroku, and yeah, the deployment to Heroku. The docs have excellent information. I think they have everything. And for the last application that I was talking about, it's called Freebird. It is deployed to Kubernetes, and yeah, we are using Docker images, and yeah, I think. That is, I, I, I guess you're not that DevOpsy, so <laughs> you got stuck a bit on that <laughs> on the free bud. Uh, you do the software, then let them ship it out. So <laughs> I can talk a bit about uh, how we saved the farmer's season. So uh, the infrastructure is um, the CI CD is on GitLab. Um, we use the GitLab CI CD, which is mostly Docker containers, and you use a YAML file for that. We package it up uh, initially. Um, started with the Lixa 1 point, was it 1.6 or 1.7, somewhere there. So there was no releases built in. Um, so we had to use distillery. Yeah, it was a long, it was a long week trying to figure out what needs to go where, but ultimately we were able to deploy it out to AWS. Yeah, so it's deployed down to AWS. We use the GitLab CI CD. Okay. 
All right, thank you very much. Yeah, I was just curious because you were talking about like uh, saving costs. So I was wondering whether there was some, some specific service that you were using or I don't know, some, something like that, but okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah and if you talk about the saving costs, um, really the other reason we went for GitLab in this scenario was because back then only GitLab allowed you unlimited access to the repositories and they had built in CI CD. So we didn't need to have a public repo for that. So that was also part of saving on costs, not on deployment, but on your way up. Uh, there was a talk I had yesterday. I can't, it was the first keynote that was by Simon. Uh, Simon clearly put it that if you have your CI CD right, then you have an extra employee. And that was really right. That's why we went for GitLab. That was our extra employee in the company. Super. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Carsten has a question. Uh, I don't know if Carsten will unmute his mic and ask it. Yes, I would like to. Yeah, thanks Thanks to both of you. It was a really inspiring talk, so very good. Um, I just had a question about, like you showed us a picture of the children in the school learning and you're helping them. Um, I was just interested, like, um, how, how is your technology helping them? What are you actually doing? Maybe I just missed that, then sorry for that. Otherwise, I would love to hear more details about that. Okay, no problem. Um, so, Linda, I can go with this. <laughs> yes. All right, so what happens here is, um, I'll just do a bit of explanation. So this, uh, this is a school, um, it's a bit on, it's actually on the lowest end. So it's a group of schools where the fee is not that much. Uh, you've had 20 USD is a lot of money. So even the fee might not get up to 20 USD for the whole year sometimes because some parents cannot just afford to do this. So this is a school looks like this. It has a lot of kids. So what the organization does, which is not us, it's the organization that approached for a solution. What it does is... Um, they go to the schools and pick the bottom 10. So I was just saying, imagine the bottom 10 of this bottom 10. <laughs> so those are the kids that they pick up and they do their remedial um, classes. So there's extra classes just before the main classes begin and during games time. Every single day there has to be recording of what they've learned and how they performed. If they came to school or if they don't. And uh, at the end of the year, we do analytics of the data to find out um, is there a correlation between the tutor who is standing right here, their attendance, and the student's attendance. Is this a better tutor than the other one? Also, there are so many factors and so much data that can be derived from this. And are the children being helped to improve in their classes? So over time, and as we gain more data, we are able to look at the performance of each and every student each and every day, each and every term, and each and every year. So that um, in a year or two, the M&D team can come in and say, yes, this is an impactful um, organization, and it's really helping the kids to do this, this, and that. 